Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is Professor Peter Vekunta in the United States of America. Uh, I just wanted to take some time off today to talk to you about some topics that I think are pretty disturbing for me as far as uh, the African continent is concerned. I, I'm, I'm trying to talk about a few things that are very culture related, and uh, there are not many, but I just want to underscore those because they are, uh, as far as I said, as, I, as far as I'm concerned, um, they are the cultures that are keeping us in the dark. The first one is uh, what we is generally called um, female genital mutilation. Uh, we all know that this, uh, this uh, cultural uh, aspect is very predominant in most, uh, in most, African, in most African countries in Africa. Uh, in fact, uh, literary uh, uh, authors like uh, Maria Memba, who wrote uh, a novel titled um, uh, Une si longue lettre, which is translated as not so, so, so long a letter, uh, has underscored those those aspects in uh, in the, in the African culture because um, you know female genital mutilation is of course a, an abuse uh, you know by any standards that you want to talk about it's just an abuse of of the female body and so I, I think that that's a that's a culture that we need to debunk we need to give our girls the opportunity to you know to um, to uh, handle their bodies the way they deem fit and not impose. Or any kind of any kind of mutilation on, on our on our female children. The second aspect I want to talk about, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is the um, um, the the aspect of uh, virginity testing. Again, this practice targets it targets women. It targets girls uh, in countries that I know about, in uh, particularly South Africa, where I lived for for about six years. Uh, you know, uh, virginity testing is is a practice that is ongoing, and uh, from my perspective, I think that that is a practice that we should not allow because it, again, like I said, it violates it violates the female body. Uh, female, uh, you know, uh, virginity testing is performed uh, in by women, by all women who uh, know very little about uh, about uh, hygiene. In terms, you know, uh, how do we pro because they what did what did they do? I mean, uh, they explore the genitals of young girls, um, you know, using uh, I don't know if they use gloves nowadays, but even if they use gloves, I don't believe that they are they are um, uh, sterilized properly. And the question that normally comes to mind, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is the fact is is this? I've asked this question a couple of times. Why is it that uh, female, uh, sorry, uh, virginity testing is done only on the female, on, on girls? Are boys not also liable to to uh, to uh, misbehavior, to promiscuity, and so on and so forth? Why why do we not uh, perform uh, virginity testing on on the male child? Why is it that the female child is the target of of virginity, uh, virginity testing? Uh, and I, of course, the answer is very simple. If you know. Uh, you know the cultural structure of Africa there is uh, it's mostly a patrilineal uh, uh, society where men call the shots and so uh, from my perspective I think that this type of uh, uh, macho mentality has to be eradicated uh, you know uh, very fast in order to liberate our female children from from the shackles of cultural uh, what I call cultural cultural uh, dictatorship the other thing that I want to talk about, ladies and gentlemen, this evening is uh, the concept of uh, widow inheritance. Right? We all know from you know a, from uh, from uh, studies of African cultures, uh, many many cultures do allow they do uh, you know they do permit um, the inheritance of widows. For example, in in my culture. Uh, the, uh, the 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 Bamunka, the Bamunka culture in the in Dub in the Dub area in Dub area. Uh, if uh, if I die today, for example, um, my younger brother is entitled to inherit my wife, you know, um, and can produce children with his wife, and that's uh, that's culturally sanctioned. It is not frowned upon because that's the culture. And of course, you know what that what that means. I mean, in many cases, there has been a lot of protests from women, and uh, there's been 
uh, a lot of haggling about the uh, you know property inheritance and so on and so forth. And so I think I believe that the, the practice in itself is uh, is is one that should be debunked. And uh, you know uh, you can take care of a wife, uh, you know, uh, take care of your brother's wife without necessarily having to have any type of uh, social, sexual intercourse with a woman and let the woman, uh, you know, live her life and, uh, you know, uh, maintain a certain degree of self-determination. Self and so that's another aspect that I think it's uh, causing a lot of problems in most African cultures. Uh, you know, I've spoken to friends from other parts of Africa, including South Africa and, and, and other, other, other regions of Africa, and they, they say that the, this practice is is still prevalent. As a human rights activist and somebody who believes in freedoms and uh, and uh, in uh, in the right to for the right to self determination, I believe that uh, you know what we do inheritance is 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 it should not be condoned. And uh, the, the the other thing that I want to talk about, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, the concept of witchcraft. I must say, I must say, this is a canker that is destroying Africa. Because if you go to any African country, okay, including my country of origin, Cameroon, this the concept of witchcraft or superstition is really destroying, is entering, is eating into the fabric of African of our people. Uh, somebody dies, they say, "Oh no, he's been bewitched by uh, a grandparent who was angry with with his behavior." Somebody, uh, you know, uh, somebody's business collapses. Oh, no, it is a neighbor that was jealous of him and therefore he casts uh, some uh, magical spell on the person. And so we have all these things, the nomenclatures like uh, in Cameroon, we have the nomenclatures like uh, we call it uh, either Famla or Mangang or Isingang. Uh, we, there's even in the uh, in the matrimonial uh, situation we have uh, uh, we have uh, witchcraft uh, not witchcraft I'll call them uh, traditional uh, sorcery uh, that uh, that uh, even in, that even seems to be uh, impacting the relationship between uh, husband uh, between spouses in uh, in the Cameroon for example we have what we call uh, we call tobasi tobasi is a it's a, a sort of, uh, you know, magical portion that women put in in the food of their husbands to be able to uh, ch so-called so charm them, you know, so that they become like uh, sort of sexually enslaved to the women. And uh, this practice is, is, is well known in, in Africa, in, in Cameroon, where I come from. And, uh, uh, and, and, so, and so these are practices in South Africa, where I lived for years, there's a practice called uh, muti, muti. Is is the same thing as uh, the uh, the tobasi or the 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 mangang, which is the traditional all those concoctions they do the fetish, what I call them fetishes. Uh, the South Africa is is very it's a notable case because I have friends there and every day we talk about the the impact of of uh, uh, muti and sangomas. Now sangomas are uh, traditional witch doctors, and they are I can tell you from my discourses with friends in South Africa, um, the practices of, sang of, uh, of the Sangomas are, you know, are really wreaking havoc in, in many families that I know about. And uh, because, uh, and again, sadly enough, our people uh, believe so firmly in these practices that you can hardly, it will need, it will, need, it will take a lot of a Herculean endeavor to uh, dissuade these people that uh, uh, muti and mengang and all that uh, other stuff is uh, is is counterproductive. A again, I want to underscore something here very very strongly. I'm not discounting the importance and the efficacy of uh, of traditional medicine. Okay, I mean in the Western world we talk about uh, uh, non 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 uh, non, non uh, conventional medicine. Uh, when we talk about non conventional medicine. In the Western world, we're thinking about the alternative medicines like uh, acupuncture and and so on and so forth, yoga, and so those are those are medicinal uh, practices that are not conventional in the in the in the you know in the strict sense of the word. That's not what I'm condemning here. African, we have African doc, uh, uh, traditional doctors who are using the same herbs that are used in the that are used by Western laboratories uh, to cure. 
Okay, I'm not condemning that. What I'm condemning, folks, is this blind belief um, in uh, you know witchcraft, in uh, uh, the impact of evil spirits uh, on the lives of people. Again, as a Christian, as a practicing serious student of the Bible, I do know that uh, we are we must acknowledge the presence of uh, you know of the principalities of of, of evil. Uh, if you read Ephesians. I think it's chapter six. You will hear that we are manip- we are we are fighting. We Christians are fighting against uh, you know uh, power the you know, the the dominions of, of evil. Um, but sure, what we what we're going to fight those what the instrument we're going to use to fight those uh, those evil powers is not is not mengang or muti tobasi or all that stuff. It's going to be spirituality. Okay, we're going to use the word the biblical word to fight those. To fight those things, and so from my perspective, I believe that we need to uh, debunk the myth of witchcraft. We need to debunk the myth, the myth of, uh, of 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 uh, you know muti and and uh, and all that stuff. There, these things are they're rampant, and people are you know busy, uh, you know, uh, decimating each other you know, or witch hunting using using all those all those kinds of uh, mythical beliefs. Okay, and so that's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. I just wanted to talk about uh, a few of these things. I'll be expanding on this video uh, in due course, um, but I thought I should talk about these because they are very fundamental to progress. We cannot be talking about uh, economic emancipation, political emancipation, uh, while at the same time practicing all kinds of, uh, you know, retard, retard, retarding uh, cultural uh, practices, uh, you know, that, will, that are keeping us in the dark. And, and so I thought that uh, because this is, it may, it may sound like a trivial a triviality, but it's, they're not trivial because if you go to some African countries, you're going to find out that they, there's, uh, there's uh, you know, killings, mutual, uh, you know, uh, ritual killings. People kill children and people believe in stupid things like I've heard about stories where somebody get, I try, you know, uh, con- contracts AIDS and uh, he goes to a, to a sangoma or to a, a traditional doctor or a witch, a witch doctor and they tell him, hey, you have to go and uh, rape a, 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 um, a, a, a teenage girl in order to, to get re- rid of AIDS. And so we have, we have things like that in, going on in Africa. We have, uh, you know, um, uh, the, the, the mutilation of, of people, of children uh, whose private parts are sold to all these sangomas. And so these are not, uh, these are, in my opinion, ladies and gentlemen, these are not, op- these are not practices that we take uh, with, a, with, a pinch, with a pinch of salt. No, these are practices that we have to fight against with, uh, you know, tooth and nail, I would say, uh, using all kinds of uh, modus operandi, if it means we have to use even the legal, the legal uh, system, we should. Otherwise, uh, we can use, uh, you know, um, educational media. We can use uh, traditional um, uh, meeting houses. We can use now today is uh, 21st century. This is an age of uh, the age of, uh, you know, technology. We can use uh, a lot of platforms like, you know, WhatsApp, or Facebook to educate our people that these practices need, need to be discarded if we have to make progress. And then of course, uh, we can even use schools. Uh, African scholars have written, people like Joseph Mbiti has u- written books. Um, uh, I remember one of his books is titled uh, African Philosophies and Religion. We need to read books like that because um, uh, people like Mbiti, they, they, people like Mbiti say a lot about who we are in terms of philosophies and, and cultural practices. And so that's it, ladies and gentlemen. I know I don't want to keep this video. I don't want to make this video very long because people are busy and uh, people don't have time to listen to long videos. But I thought I should make this point because I think to me it's absolutely crucial. And uh, I hope that this video uh, kind of tickles some kind of, uh, uh, tickles people to get into some type of discourse about the, the, the theme and the, and, the, and the concerns that I've raised, I've raised here. These are not trifling matters. They are critical matters that need to be confronted headlong and... Uh, and uh, try to put an end to it. And so I'm going to end here. I wish you every. I wish everybody, uh, you know, a nice evening and uh, and, and good luck with uh, the fight against COVID-19. I think that uh, this is time for us to um, really be 
thinking more scientifically rather than begin to, you know, plunge ourselves into into uh, the atmosphere of darkness. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye bye.